Hello, everyone. It's Thursday, my favorite time of the week, which means we're talking about robot trading and robot topics and all sorts of fun things here on, like I said, Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Of course, for me, that's during the day. And of course, for others, that's different. Uh, before we get started, though, I did want to spe send a special shout out to the Microsoft stores in malls. A couple of hours ago, my computer uh, stopped working. The screen went blank, and I went into a mild panic. I don't panic very much, but I was a little bit concerned because it was about an hour to go to our webinar today, and the computer would not turn on. As it turned out, they went above and beyond. They recharged it for me. It was just a short in my charging cord. They gave me a new one. It was unbelievable. The service, service at the Microsoft Store was unbelievable. Go buy seven computers from your local Microsoft Store. Thank you very much. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about something which I think is extremely important. It's how to make a lot of money, right? Isn't that why we're here? Uh, and there's a couple of ways that we can do it. We're going to talk about that in a second. Of course, if you want to sign up for the Wednesday weekly newsletter, all you have to do is go to my homepage, click that button, and I send you an ebook, and you get on the email weekly newsletter list. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. We're going to expand to talk about new things today. So if you want to get on the list, click that button and you will get a, an email every Wednesday. Let's talk though about the monster winner. I wasn't kidding when I said yesterday that I absolutely love these stories. Does anybody else love these stories? I mean, isn't it awesome to hear, well, I bought it at this and I sold it at this and I'm rich. Right. I don't I don't I'm not the type of person to get envious. I don't know. Are there people out there who get envious? I, not me. I love to hear success stories. They make me happy. They make me motivated. Um, so I love those stories and I seek those out and whether in person and somebody I know has one or if I can read find one and read one. Uh, I'm a sucker for marketing ploys from other <laughs> educators that say I made heck I'll listen to it. Most of the time I'm not happy what I listen to, but that's beside the point. I love monster winners. And I don't know how well you read. I'm a very picky uh, reader. I read everything. I love reading. I don't skim, really. So I don't know if you read my, the weekly newsletter, but did you happen to catch this? I, I feel like nobody caught this. If you had invested $100, right? I, th I think we all have 100 bucks that's lying around somewhere, right? If you had invested a hundred dollars in Bitcoin in 2010, you do realize it's over 100 million now. One hundred dollars to over 100 million. If you're a Bitcoin investor and you stayed in the whole way because you're super smart and have nerves of steel, that that's about the best one I think I've ever heard in my lifetime. I love the Big Short stories, right? I I love the movie The Big Short when they made a billion dollars on a trade. I do love those stories. I love them so, so much. But I, Bitcoin stories, I mean, I know someone who knows someone. I mean, I've met someone who was an early investor in Bitcoin, not $100 to $100 million. So I know that these people exist. And I just, I love that so much, right? And like I said, I mentioned the Big Short. Did you love that scene in the Big Short, by the way, where uh, Michael Burry, um, the Christian Bale character, came out and it's like he's, all the trials and tribulations, and it's down, and it's bet, and it's it's a weird bet that no one believes in. And then finally, at the end of the movie, he puts down, he makes like, you know, a million percent or whatever it was. I, I just, I love that. He writes on the whiteboard, 158% win or something like that, whatever it is. All right, anyway, I love those stories. They're motivating, and I hope you love them too. But like all things, when you hear these stories, there's another side to that coin. And that other side is, how do you stay in? I, I, I hear you, 100 bucks to 100 million. I get that. It's awesome. But how in the Sam Hill does any human being stay in that trade? Right? So it's 2010. It's almost 2018 now. It's gaining on it. That's eight, nine years of trading, depending on how early you got in. How do you stay in the whole time, right? It's easy to say, oh, I got this, I picked this stock and I held it. Well, how? Nobody talks about this, at least nobody that I can find. How honestly do you stay in and get that monster winner? 
I'm fascinated by this. Not the beginning of the story where mm, I bought Apple. You know, Apple seemed like an up and coming company, so I bought it. You know, I liked its products. It had a cool commercial in 1984, and I bought it and I held it and whatever, right? I, I hear all that. But what is the day to day like, right? I, I love it when you started with 10K and made a million, or you bought it at $2 and now it's at 200 Again, I get it. But what about the middle? What about right now? What if you're in the middle of a Bitcoin trade? I have a friend of mine who's now just started a Bitcoin trade, uh, legitimate. A little late to the game, maybe. But I have other people saying Bitcoin's going to $50,000. <laughs> it's at 4000 It's going to 50000 You want to get on that train? Well, somebody's saying it's going to 50000 Just throwing that out there. All right. All right. So let's say you do. How do you go from now to then? What is your life like day to day? It's not. I mean, eight years is so long. So many news events, so many things happening. How in the world do you stay in? Or what's the daily life look like? OK, well, here's a story. True story. Early in my career, as you, if you know me at all, I, am a I was a stock trader. It's how we all start. Right. And my first big trade, my best big trade was Ceradyne, company that no longer trades. It makes body armor, right? I've talked about it at times before. Do you have any idea how much I studied that stock? Value Line, Motley Fool, Message Boards, Online News, everything. You better believe I even called Investor Relations. I did. And I knew so much about the company, I thought I was so cool. I could ask them relevant questions on their sales and the war in Iraq, right? I lived and died Saradine. That was my day-to-day. -day. You want to know what a day-to-day -day is? That's my day-to-day. -day. And oh, that wasn't even a year, right? It wasn't even 12 months. It started in May in 2005, and it was over by January, right? It's over. Actually, April, excuse me, right? I know people are checking those facts, okay? So I did make it to 100%, but it was so hard. Every time the stock dipped, and this stock really moved on news, you know, it had a, a, it made its numbers, but it wasn't quite the sales or the revenue, whatever, it didn't come in right, it would drop 8, 10, 12% in a day. How's that treat you when you've got a huge investment, right? I poured a lot of money into Saradine, and the dips were terrible. I distinctly remember, I'll remember for the rest of my life. Jill and I were walking. We love vacationing in Chicago. We, that's where we go, right? If I wasn't on the tennis court, I went and vacationed in Chicago. We were walking the streets of downtown Chicago where we loved. And Sarah Dine had just come out with a bad report. And we were like, we were up in it. You know, I was up like 47% by that time. Like I thought I was a genius. And then it dropped, you know, like 10%. And I'm like, what are we going to do? Like we were worried about all this, right? We walked into a Barnes & Noble bookstore and tried to find books on helping me deal with this drop, right? I think I looked at one of William O'Neill's books. I forget the book I read, but this was part of our conversation. Just one little dip, right? And it wasn't even a year. It's unbelievable, right? Go back and look at the chart too, right? There were a lot of dips. Oh, do you want to see it? Oh, heck, I'll show it to you. You want to see it? Here, you're going to have to move this though. Thank you very much. All right, here you go. C-R-D-N, right? Take a little look, see, right? Look at this. Here's the monthly chart, right? I bought it in 2005. See this? This is around April. Look what I did. I bought it there. Oh, you think that's a month, right? This is a monthly chart. How'd you like to deal with that month? Like, look, look, I bought it up, up, up. I am so smart. Well, break even month. Who cares? Up, up, up. Look at me. I am the greatest investor. That's a month of losing. And this is probably about the time we had our little problem, although this wasn't much fun either. Drop, didn't know what to do, huge push up, and I got out somewhere in here, not even a year later. It was less than a year. See this fall, right? Hmm. This is a monthly chart. This doesn't even give one, one hundredth of the torture of the day-to-day, -day, right? And then, as it turns out, Saradine went even higher. I missed out on all of that. Oh, and then look, it fell right back down to where I bought it and lower okay look at that day to day right but anyway back to the story i stayed in and i even bought more on the dips and as it turned out it worked i mean i guess you consider that working or i bought on the dips and the, i mean did it work sorry i keep flipping back and forth but that didn't work right if i had held on it wouldn't have worked <sighs> but it worked for 100 percent, right 
So it brings me back to my question, right? That all could have gone badly. I could have lost my 100, I think I made 115% on that one trade, right? And that gave me a, a nice, huge trading stake. But I could have lost it all. I could have gone badly. So what do we do? How do you stay in when the stock dips? You just have faith, right? Faith in your company. Uh, oh, this company's going to be fine. Do you go to news sites like I did, message boards? Do you call the company like I did? Honestly, how? This is a real problem, and nobody's talking about it. Well, let's talk about some ways we could stay in. Belief in the company. Well, great. Do you remember Enron? There was, and, and I've read several books on Enron because I'm fascinated by this stuff. Six straight years in Enron, stock rose. Everyone in the country slash world believed in Enron. Enron had revolutionized management. They had revolutionized energy companies. They were basically getting ready to get into um, um, broadband, which is a failure. They were going to expand their business model into everything. They're going to be like the one size fits all because they were the smartest and they were going to take over multiple industries. Six straight years, Forbes called them the most innovative company. Remember what happened? Zero. <laughs> Belief in Enron would have made us lose everything. And many people did lose everything. We could have seen our stock go from you know, 100% win, more than that, 200% win, and lose it all. Well, what about Valiant? Here's one in the news that is currently trading. Let's take a look. How about Valiant? You buy in 2007, 2008. 2009, right? You buy that down at, see the closing price there of nine bucks, 9.9, .9, say 10 bucks. You, are you a genius? Well, how do you stay on that dip? How do you stay on that dip? How do you stay on that dip? But if you did, it goes all the way to 260, 10 to 260. You are rich. Oh, back down to 14. You got nothing, right? Nothing. How, how do you stay in of all that? Do you see what I'm saying, right? I don't know how possible it is. Now, I would love for you to email me and tell me how much smarter you are than me and how you would stay in. I'd love to hear that. I'd love for you to share that with everyone. Share it. How do you stay in, right? But believing in the company does work, right? I'm giving you examples where it doesn't. Even Ceradyne, Valiant, right? you know, um, Enron. But believing the company works for Apple, right? Apple looks fine. Look at this, right? Dips, buy it, dips, buy it. That's not a problem. Is that going to work forever? How about Google? Same thing. How about Netflix, right? I'll do that one. Sorry to keep flipping around on you, but it's so much fun, right? Netflix, you buy in 2007, 2008. Ooh, that's rough. But look, right? Is that just going to look forever? Doesn't that look like this? So what if I scooch over? Doesn't that, what does that look like, right? What does that look like? <laughs> Aren't they the same? Aren't they? Except one doesn't have a drop. How do we truly know Apple's going to be fine? Google's going to be fine. Netflix is going to be fine. Bitcoin's going to be fine. How do we know, right? Well, we could say Apple is a totally different company than Enron. Apple is totally different, as is Google, as is Netflix. Those are totally different. Well, Enron begs to differ, right? Nobody, you, you go back and read. You do not believe how beloved Enron is. It's just like Apple in its day, right? So, okay, but fine. Maybe those are going to last forever, in which case I wish everybody luck. I wish you luck. I don't like to see you lose, right? Or maybe, forget belief, those just never dropped, right? The ride in those have been so smooth, in Bitcoin included, the ride so smooth that we don't even question it. Right. Well, did you happen to catch that in the post yesterday? Bitcoin is by far the biggest winner that I can even come up with. Right. And did you know in 12 months it dropped 80 percent? Who stayed in? Who? I'm fascinated by the person that has an idea. Well, Bitcoin, well, cryptocurrencies are the wave of the future. Cryptocurrencies are going to be how money is done into the future. It's going to 50,000. I get it. Maybe you're right. That'd be awesome. But who's staying in for an 80% drop? And not in one day, like, oh, buck up, camper. You know, we're going to be fine. 80% over 12 months. 
losing, 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 right? Who does that? How do we do that? How do I do that on purpose? How do you and I sit and talk on a webinar and you come to me like, hey, Scott, you recommended Bitcoin. It's down 76%. And I'm like, nope, that's perfect. <laughs> Keep going, right? Do you see, do you see the day-to-day? Do you see how hard it is, right? But if you say, okay, I'm staying in, well, all of these others, Enron, Valiant, all these others dropped 80%. Well, how come you didn't get out of those, right? If you stayed in those, you go to zero. If you stay in Bitcoin, you make 4,000% or whatever. You see, there really isn't a good way. There isn't anything I can teach you or come up with or any sort of repeatable plan to have a real-time way to stay in these huge winners. Every argument for staying in has a really good counter-argument that ends in disaster. So I want you to, if you're buying and holding, my fingers are crossed for you. But how do you know? How do you know? All right? And that's the trouble with these monster winners. That's the dark side. Yes, I love the success stories. But I'm fascinated with the day-to-day. -day. Now, maybe you're a buy and holder and you just never look at your account. You look at it every other year, right? Or every five years, right? Well, that'd be great. But guess what? In 2008, you could have <laughs> maybe picked up your account statements and seen something horrifying. Or if you're an Enron person who had all your life savings, like many of the workers did in Enron, um, you check that in two years and now you have zero, right? So unless you never watch your account, which may be the best buy and hold strategy of all, if you do watch it, isn't it a constant state of discussion or worry? I know it was for me in my Ceridine experiment. It wasn't even a year. Constant. Well, should I get out? Or should I buy more? Is it over? Is it in? Message boards. No, no, no. Right? Is this the way you like to trade? Going for the monster winner and constantly figuring out what do I do on the dips? If it is, then I have faith that you might get the big winner and I'm excited for you. But there's another thing you can do. You could be a system trader which for this particular webinar means you're a robot trader. Do you understand a systems trader doesn't deal with any of this? You don't deal with charts that could look like this and then later look like this. You don't deal with it, right? Well, why wouldn't you deal with that? Well, if you're a long-only trader, for example, just one example, you wouldn't, get, you wouldn't be getting in any trades. And yes, you may catch a loser in this period right here because it's kind of leveling off, but you're never going to be in a trade and watch this happen. System traders have stops. They have rules. There's a beginning and there's an end, and you have to follow the rules. There is no end run situation. Well, analysts say end run's still a buy because that happened. Even when it had dropped from 80 down to 10, people were still saying buy. Look it up. You never have to worry about that if you're a system trader. You'll never have to worry if you got out too soon. Ah, I got out, right? What if I got out here? Oh, I missed all of that. Robot traders, system traders never have to worry about that, ever. Because why? Well, A, if you're a robot trader, it does it for you. So you never have to make a human decision. Or B, you only take trades when the rules say to. And if, there doesn't, if a trade doesn't set up, you do not get in that trade. You just constantly trade the system. Enron, Valiant, Ceradyne is off the table. Do you like that? Well, what's the downside of that? That sounds great. Well, here's the downside. You can't get that monster winner. You cannot be a buy or a, a systems trader, excuse me. You cannot be a systems trader and make the same amount of money because you need to be in the whole way through. Now, we haven't even talked about, well, how much is enough, right? We haven't even talked about how it goes great, but you get out of a 38% win instead of a 4,000% win, right? That's, that's a part of this. We haven't even really talked about it, right? But with a system, you're in and you're out and you're protected, but you can never make the monster winner. Well, then it's off the table. I don't want to do that. Well, hold on. Hold on, everybody. Let's take a look at Apple from a robot's viewpoint from a systems viewpoint. I mentioned yesterday, and you can go back and read, um, read the post on how much Apple has made. 10,000, I believe, turned into a million. Okay, great. Here's Apple, though, not buying and holding. 
And buying and holding means Enron is always on the table. If you're buying and hold, it's always there. Here's what it looks like if you did a day trading system, right? And this system takes small wins, has a hard stop, right? There is a stop loss. It only goes long because I love robots that only go long in stocks. I trade both directions in futures and forex. But in stocks, I love long only. My particular robots work so much better. And it uses one of the systems we always talk about, you know, Hornet, Heron, that type of thing, okay? It isn't perfect, right? I didn't optimize the crap out of this for you today. And it doesn't win all the time. No, it doesn't. It's not a superstar. It's not as, as good as some of the other robots we've talked about. But, <laughs> but... If, instead of being a buy and holder and having the worry and worrying about the dips, if we traded on a 10K account and compounded the gains at the end of a year by upping the trade size according to how much profit we made. So if we made 50%, trade size went up 50%. That's it, right? Just a corresponding compounding. That $10,000 initial investment would have turned into 233,000 in 14 years. That is 25% per year on average compounded annual rate. You want to see that? Check it out. Here's 2004 using the robot, and this is it right here, right? There it is, see? It waits for the trend to be up, buys on a dip, gets out at a profit target. Not unlimited, just takes a small one. Trend is, overall trend is up, bought on a dip, and then here. This one, trend was up, bought on a dip, and got a nice little gap winner, right? So that's the robot. You can see it trading there. And there's a spreadsheet. Well, 2004 was awesome. On a $10,000 investment, you would have made almost 100%, right? So I guess systems can work pretty well, right? So once I made that much, I upped the trade size, right? And then I made that much profit, which gave us there, up the trade size, Made a little bit of profit in 2006, up the trade size. They had a nice year, up the trade size. Had a losing year. Look, everybody. Losing year. Boom, it went down, lowered the trade size. Good year up, good year up. No, another losing year. Boo, trade size lowered. Up, up, up. Oh, another losing year. Trade size lowered. And then a good year. And that's how we end up with our 233. So it has three losing years. It's not perfect. But you never have to worry about it going to zero. You don't always keep your wins. Clearly, there's a, a losing years. But we're not going to zero. This is a totally different viewpoint, right? It's not a million dollars. We talked about buy and hold went to a million. But it's also practically worry-free without any angst about getting out early. And you are 100% protected from the big fall. Yes, maybe you're open to gaps, but it's not gapping to zero, right? It's just going to be a large losing, right? And that happened. And that did happen in this, in this period. But that's the difference between two different methods. Would you call this a monster winner? 25% compounded a year, 10K into 233 in 14 years. Is that a monster winner? Or do you need that million? Is this, you know, peanuts for you? Well, that's something that you have to decide. One thing we do in these webinars is we are constantly bombarding you with what do you like? Who are you? What is your style? Because here's the bottom line. You need to know who you are. Which of these scenarios do you prefer? The monster win? It's awesome, but it comes with tough times. And is that fine with you? Do you like all of your eggs in that one risky basket where it might go to zero? Or are you going to split it into five and buy and hold in five different ones? Well, one of those five might be a big winner. Two of those might go to zero or vice versa. Or maybe they'll all work. Is this fine with you, though? Do you like having all your eggs in one basket and then just letting it rip or rip downward? Or... Do you like systems? Do you like robots? Less money if you trade a monster winner, right? It's less money. Buy and hold to trading robots on a stock. Buy and hold wins in quantity. Buy and hold loses horribly when it goes to zero because you can still make money even if a stock is dropping, 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 okay? Systems make less money 
than a monster winner, but more protection. And here are my last words for you today. Picking the one of these that you don't like will not work. If you can't stand the day-to-day -day and the buying on the dips or ways of going down and going to the message boards, then you'll never get that monster winner. You will get out too soon, right? I know I panicked. I could have made more, right? But I also could have lost it all, right? Picking the one you don't like will not work. But picking the one you do like can make you a ton of money too, right? That's our message of the day. Let's take a look and see if we have any comments from our peanut gallery. And what is a peanut gallery? I was, I'm curious. I'm going to look that up, actually. I'm actually going to do a blog post on all sorts of silly phrases. <laughs> Would you like that? And I'm going to find the origin. Um, okay. <laughs> Eddie says, hi, from Wellington. Hello, Eddie, and welcome to from Wellington. Michael says, long MSFT. Yeah, that's a good one. I didn't look at that one, but that's a great one. Daniel says, Bitcoin <laughs> would have been phenomenal. Good grief. That's an awesome story. I love that so much. But he was so bashed. Mel says he was so bashed by friends and customers that he retired. I don't know what referring. Oh, the big short. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry, Mel. Yeah, yeah. The big short. Yeah, he did. That guy made that huge win, Michael Burry. Yeah, and, he, and he's out of the game now. He got out of the game, and he was right. Yeah, that movie's great. Well, see the big short if you hadn't. Um, Mel says, which does he prefer? He prefers systems and robots. Ha. Good, but could be better. And Mel says, I want more. I know, Mel. Me too. But that's a pretty good example, though, right? I mean, 10K into 233, it ain't bad, but we can do better. Mel says, systems. Douglas says, robots, hands down. Well, that's good. Thank you, Al. Great, great comments, everybody. Um, here is uh, the latest updates. I said uh, no webinar last week. There won't be one next Thursday. I got my weeks mixed up. I will be traveling next Thursday, so no webinar. The webinar schedule should reflect that. Um, I will be traveling that day, but we'll be back in two weeks from now. Uh, we're going to talk more about the heron. I've got some serious, fun thoughts about the heron, so we're going to do. Uh, we'll probably be talking about that in two weeks. By the way, um, robots are available. Courses are available. Books are available. We just had uh, some more people buy the book. Um, I really worked hard on it. It's only two bucks. Feel free to check it out. And we're over 840 on YouTube. We're getting a little a little tribe going. Um, and we've got over 2,500 on our weekly Wednesday email list. So uh, we've got a little corner of the world. And it's so exciting. And I'm so thankful for you all. And it's so much fun. All right, so here are the contact information. That's all for this week, everybody. I will see you in two weeks. Bye for now.